Well, will you show us the creative process you all go through? Because there's so many steps. Sure. From we have this idea to here it is. Sure. Well, it actually it starts with the owner and what their needs and objectives are. Okay. And so if they are doing a new building, the first thing we need to do is just to interview them and say, okay, let's find out exactly what you need. And we call that process programming. Okay. So it's a series of interviews and worksheets that they fill out. And then it culminates in a document that we would say, okay, this is basically the recipe for our building. These are all the ingredients that we need to make this building function. And we talk about adjacencies, who you want to be next to, or maybe who you don't want to be next to. Sure. And uh, everything else that would go into how that building will function as they need it to be. And so once we have a programming document and it's mm -hmm. approved, we move into what's called schematic design. And that's very fun for us because then, now we're really starting with this blank sheet of paper and saying, okay, what is this building going to be? But when, we, when you think about how we're designing in the year 2012 and beyond. Uh, there's so much that's happening with innovation, collaboration, yes. flexibility, and branding. Right. So you really need to have a very deep understanding of what your clients, not what their goals and objectives are, but who they are as a company and sure. how do they want to be seen sure. to their community, to their clients. Right. So we really need to do a lot of uh, research and understanding there and sometimes we'll show them images and say, does this look like you or does this not look like you? Or even ask them like a crazy car. If you were a, a crazy question, like if right. you were a car, yes. what type of car would you be? And it's very oh, thought provoking for <laughs> yeah. them because they want to say something, but they're like, wait a second, that's what I want, but is that how I want to be perceived? So once we get that aligned, right. that really starts to drive our design. And then we start to think about context. Where is mm -hmm. the building? And if it's a new building in a historical context, how can we rely on datum lines or scale and rhythm and materiality mm -hmm. to make sure that they fit and they're respectful mm -hmm. of its surroundings, but yet it still looks like it was designed in the year 2012. Got it. It's a lot. Yeah. It's so, an awful lot. Oh, it is. And it's, but it's, 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 a, it's, super, it's, a, it's a great process and we enjoy it. And one of the things we do is we're very collaborative. So we're, we'll take our landscape architects, our interior mm -hmm. designers, and our architects and we'll get them in a room and we just sit there and just talk about design and we'll sketch and then we'll create things on the computer. We also have a laser cutter where we can make pretty amazing models so you can test what things look like and, and again it's a very iterative process so it's not from going point A to B, it's going here and then back and so uh, and then once the schematic design process is done, obviously mm -hmm. we uh, would make a presentation to the owner and they would say yes you're hitting the mark or no you're not. And then after that point, then it really turns into developing the details that the contractor needs to put the drawing together. So we do have a, one of our collaboration rooms out mm -hmm. here if you'd like to go oh, talk yes. to the group. They're just, they picked up their computers, they just sit in there and they work together and we can see what they're up to. Okay, let's do it, right. thank you. Right now, I'm in the teaming room with Katie and Brett who are going to give us the overview of how they start the collaboration process, what tools they use, and ultimately it's the idea to concepts such as what we see on the wall behind Katie here. What's the starting point for the team? Starting point for the team is probably first off meeting with the client and really trying to find out what their ideas are for the project, um, what their overall design concepts, if they have any are mm -hmm. as well, and then take that back to your team and come and meet in this teaming room and really start to play with some different ideas, whether it be hand sketches or some 3D modeling um, with what we usually use SketchUp, uh, which is 3D modeling program, uh, and really just start to play around some ideas and concepts. And Brad, do you have anything on top of that? Yeah, usually um, that's how our team works. We, uh, we just get together, everybody. Some people will break out and kind of work better on their own coming up with concepts. Sure. Um, but a lot of times, uh, the way we work with is some, someone might be working in SketchUp while other people are sketching out ideas, and then those ideas that they're sketching out are modeled by somebody that's fairly proficient in that program. So that way those can be put up on the board. And then after that point, when you have a model that you're fairly comfortable with, a lot of times we'll use our laser cutter mm -hmm. and we'll produce models like these that are on the table to really get an understanding of how that project is going to take shape with that concept. Very cool. So sketch up, what does mm -hmm. that term mean? 
SketchUp is the name of a 3D modeling program, and it's actually, if you can see on the screen back oh. here, that's a SketchUp uh, rendering and model. So it's it's a tool that we use quite a bit. It's actually pretty easy to learn, um, and we actually take these uh, models a lot to client meetings, and we can alter the SketchUp model right there on the computer on the screen. Uh, to show them different design options. So it's, it's really easy to use, it's a great tool for us in the beginning design phases. Um, as you can see, it renders colors and materials and you can put people in cars and all different kinds of fun elements. This is remarkable, go ahead. It becomes a great tool. It seems from our experience that it's a tool that is very easily grasped by the client. Yeah. So they don't feel intimidated by final renderings that you might see in the paper or anything sure. like that. This is fairly rudimentary as far mm -hmm. as modeling and rendering capabilities go, but the clients seem to grasp it very well as though it was a sketch on paper or something like that. It really comes to life. It's very easy for me to understand you know, how people flow, function and the flow of the space. And then to me, obviously, this is some kind of wood and this looks like maybe some concrete substrate or aluminum or whatnot. But it, it makes it very much come to life. So I can see why this is a great interpretation for them. What other tools do you have? to create, because this technology is just yeah, really yeah, technology is remarkable. Yeah, it, it's really great to have our visual, what we can visualize in our heads pretty easily, it might be harder for someone else. Yes. So that's a great tool um, to be able to uh, show that. Uh, another thing we have, which Brett talked on, was our, our laser cutter, which is really cool. So what that does is we can input uh, a design and a model in the computer, and hook uh -huh. that computer up to the printer, and it laser cuts and makes a 3D object. Which we have which then images yes. to show the yes. audience what those yes. are. Yes. Which, those are so fun to me. I don't know why it's like miniature land. And it is, it is. It is. A lot of our, our big models that we present of cities and we're looking for, you know, putting a project on a site, we're able to create that pretty quickly and easily versus um, the old fashioned way of using a it's a lot easier on the hands. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. You're know, just looking back at civilization and, you know, for oh, instance, yeah. I was talking about the pyramids with somebody last week and just like how the design, the build process, how significantly different it was perhaps then versus oh, now. Absolutely. Could you imagine? Absolutely. Especially now when we're getting down to an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch tolerance, you know, and they were able to construct. You know, ages ago without having I know. all that. So, it's, yeah, it's, it's really interesting mm -hmm. the precision that we can now take with a lot of our I love painting and colors. When <laughs> does this part of the process come into play? That's kind of all the way throughout. I really? Mean, you have, uh, we have a fairly yes. large Wait. library downstairs that we use, and we'll go downstairs and pluck out different colors that we like, materials that we're hoping to see on the project. Sometimes those those dreams are a little bit lofty for the particular project. <laughs> but um, so sometimes those get weeded out pretty fast. Sure. But um, <laughs> it still helps us develop a concept of where we want to see the project end up. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, in these teaming rooms throughout the project, it'll just be chock full of different materials, colors, and what mm -hmm. the client likes, dislikes, and so you, know, you kind of, they're throughout the entire project. So. And your input and post things mm -hmm. on the, mm -hmm. the walls you have mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So a couple of questions come to mind. When you find materials that you can fall in love with that may be outside the scope of the client's yes. budget, does it force you to be more creative in finding something that will help you to communicate what your original intention yeah, is? Yeah, absolutely, and uh, luckily there are you know, different manufacturers, for instance, with this perforated metal that make this perforated metal. It may not be the exact um, spacing or hole size or whatnot, but we can still achieve our design intent mm -hmm. with a little bit different product or manufacturer, mm -hmm. sometimes, to meet, to meet a budget. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And what else about the process intrigues you? I, I love the collaboration. Uh, when we moved to this office uh, mm -hmm. about three or four years ago, four or five years ago actually, um, the, t 
it, design intent of designing this space was collaboration, hence the teaming room. So everyone has a laptop, they're encouraged to get up out of their desk and um, work as a team together. Uh, that's probably one of my favorite parts. I mean, there tend to be some late nights too and you're sure. eating some popcorn <laughs> candy. <laughs> so I'm trying to get some monsters yeah, to stay yeah, away. Right. Um, but you know, at least you're here in, in a collaborative environment and you're all working together. It's, it's a lot, lot of easier fun. to pull those late nights yeah. when you know the guy right next to you yeah. has to do it too. Right so. there too. <laughs> exactly. Right. And it's a fun environment that just speaks oh, to mm -hmm. the energy level it takes absolutely. to be creative. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever have challenges where you have to be creative on the dime, so to speak? Yes. <laughs> quite often yeah I mean um, sometimes it just pops up either the client wants something that they need for that afternoon or mm -hmm. in a couple weeks and mm -hmm. it takes a couple weeks to put that particular uh, document together for them so yeah I mean it pops up quite a bit where mm -hmm. you're just gonna have to drop everything and put the go get it <laughs> yeah, put the over the floor and yeah get going. that's right every yeah. day is different yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely have true. those challenges that pop up for yeah. the moment Absolutely. What do you see in the future for your industry? What excites you? Oh, gosh. There's a lot out there. There I mean, is a lot out there. There's a lot of talk right now. Um, you know, the paperless studios in college, mm -hmm. you know, where you're not actually producing drawings, everything's on the computer and it's a 3D model and you're handing that model over to the contractor and that's what they build off of instead mm -hmm. of the drawings, which is an interesting concept. Um, a lot of different design programs that are out there to help integrate with sustainability and mm. daylighting and site selection and you know even what your building looks like um, you know based on the site and the orientation with the sun and so there I mean it's next 10 15 years or I think big, big changes and at least um, maybe behind the scenes and what we do and how we work sure. yeah yeah. With that, materials are constantly changing. I mean, uh -huh. the research is ongoing constantly. Of, I mean, with lead popping up in the last few years, of you know, all of a sudden you're seeing all these other materials come out that work with lead and mm -hmm. by their standards and all of that. So that's a really interesting uh, point in our profession as well as what they all have to offer as well. So. What does it feel to be a part of the rebirth of Cedar Rapids? It's actually really exciting um, to be able to have personally been affected by it with OPN mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. our building, we were displaced during the flood um, and, and just helping the community grow for the better, you know, and I think there were some things that may not have been done um, if the flood hadn't happened and now are, you yeah. know, so I think there's still a lot of good that's coming out of it. Good. It's exciting. Yeah, I mean, I'm fairly new with OPN. I've just been here for two years now and just to hear what the community was going through at that time and now the steps that have been taken since then have just been awe-inspiring what has happened and what is going to happen in the future. I think the next 10 years for Cedar Rapids are going to be very exciting. It'll be a robust place to right. live yeah. and work and... We're already up there on yeah, the list. Yeah, actually, we're getting, yep. actually so. they have achieved quite yeah. a few yeah. national accolades. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, and every day is a, a new day and it's <coughs> different than the next. So it's yeah, never the same, same thing, which is something that I enjoy. Sure. Yeah, the routine of day after day is the same. So. It's an exciting profession, you know, to be able to design the built environment mm -hmm. that we all live and breathe and work in. So it's pretty cool. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you, Katie and Brett, for sharing with us the collaboration process and your individual perspectives on creating what you brilliantly put together. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Frame is sponsored by Allegra, Click Marketing Solutions, OPN Architects, Dial Folio Jewelry, <laughs>